Well, it's almost fall. I believe technically we're on the last few weeks of summer here still, but fall is coming and the weather has certainly cooled down to anticipate that change of the season. With the cooler weather comes darker, smoother, maybe even stronger beers. And here on the west coast when you think about those darker, stronger, smoother beers, one of the standards that you'll find just about anywhere they serve craft beer is Deschutes Brewing's Black Butte Porter. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Mm, this beer comes from Phil. Here's to you, Phil. Thank you. I was looking through the beers that I have reviewed on the channel. Really, I should probably start writing those down so there's an easier way than searching my video history. And I wasn't surprised that I had not yet reviewed Black Butte Porter, but I think I've reviewed about 10 other porters, and really, Black Butte needs to be reviewed because Black Butte is one of the standards. Deschutes Brewing has several kind of standard brews. Like when you think of this style of beer, particularly on the West Coast and, and even more so in the Northwest, Deschutes have a, has a few beers that they kind of, they don't necessarily epitomize the style, maybe the way that uh, Russian Rivers, Plenty the Elder epitomizes a classic West Coast IPA, but they are really good versions of that style, expressions of that style, and they are well distributed in the area. So you can find them and and easy to find means <laughs> you drink them a lot, right? So Black Butte Porter is one of those. When you're looking for a West Coast expression of a porter in the Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho area, and probably further beyond, given what I know about Deschutes, you'll find Black Butte Porter. Hmm. Porters are a, are a relatively historic style. They're one of the earlier, or oldest, let's say oldest, um, older of the like really dark beers. They were developed in England 150, 200 years ago. And they were designed to be a strong and restoring beer for people who carried luggage around the city. That is, porters. And so this was named for the people it was invented for and drunk by. So this is a porter. This is Black Butte. And what I get to my nose is kind of a, a nuttiness. Like roasted nuts. Like a maybe a hazelnut, almost. Not like... Well, no. I was going to say not like... um you know, the chocolate hazelnut spreads, but there is a, a sweetness to this and maybe a hint of a smooth chocolate, a uh, milk chocolate. So yeah, it could even be like a hazelnut spread even, but there's also a nuttiness. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so, so kind of toasted nuts, uh, slight sweetness, uh, speaks to the malty, the malty character of the beer. Hmm, almost a saltiness too. I wonder if that's that's just kind of a, a particular expression of that that roasted nuttiness. It's a really pleasant smell if you are dealing with harvests, I think, um, because it's it's not that dry grassy smell. It is a it's a it's a calming. Um, fruits of the earth uh, kind of smell. Mm, let's see how it tastes. Mm, subtle smokiness. That's uh, the saltiness that I was picking up in the smell. I think that's kind of a, a subtle smokiness actually, which comes through more in the, in the flavor. There's also, there is still that nuttiness there is still that subtle sweetness, uh, and almost a milk chocolate, but really subdued. 
Um, none of the none of the flavors are are punching above the others, and and so it's it's really balanced. It's really it's smooth. It's tasty. Hmm. Actually, it tastes like good water too. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, it has almost a juiciness in the middle, but. But because the sweetness is, is, is relatively low, it tastes more like you're getting really nice water from a, from a good well kind of, kind of thing. Like really, really just clean and that slight mineral sweetness in your mouth. Yeah. Huh. Having, as I now do, a well on my property um, there's some days that there's a bit of an iron flavor to my water and other just things that it picks up. But um, but when the water is sweet, like the water here is so, so good. And it's not like when I go into town, I'm tasting the chlorine or whatever additives they put in there to keep the water supply clean or to treat it. Um, but there is an absence of that in my water. And this has a kind of a similar, almost mineral sweet, really beautiful. <laughs> can he even say water has a flavor? I mean, I suppose he can, because I'm talking about it, right? Maybe it's something that it evokes more than something that it uh, is, right? <clears throat> yeah, so right off the bat, right off the bat, there is um, maybe the beginnings of an apple juice, but that doesn't go as high and sweet and identify, identifiably apple. So it, instead of going like apple juice up here, it, it goes here. It's, it's like the start, but then it, it smooths off here. And that sweetness runs throughout um, all the way to the finish. And it kind of holds the whole beer together. And then you have this, that the sweetness can kind of be identified as a, as a subtle milk or hazelnut chocolate. Um, there is still a subtle uh, nuttiness to it. And there's also this smokiness that also is probably the, um, I think it's, I don't know if they use any sort of smoking in this. I'm guessing it's probably the hops in concert with the other dark and earthy, lightly dark and earthy flavors in here that produce a, a smoky character because that smokiness kind of transitions into uh, a really nice like dark green last leaves of the year kind of uh, flavor. Not that I go around chewing leaves, but the smell of the last leaves of the year is kind of the flavor that's in my mouth as the beer finishes, the hop finish. And in between, there's this nice long area that is this nice, not quite juicy, um, but still bright and mineral sweet um, middle that is really nice. And all together, there's nothing punching louder than anything else. They all work really beautifully in harmony. And if you think about, like all together, you're just thinking, oh, this is a nice, slightly sweet, dark beer. But if you look for it with your tongue, you can pick out almost any one of these flavors. Think of when you're maybe attending, not a concert, but a, it could be a concert, but there's, there's music going on and the musicians are, are skillful, but also they are very well recorded and amplified such that you can listen to them all together but if you wanted to, you could pick out any individual instrument and actually follow it. That's kind of the character of this beer. This, the flavors and the aromas are working beautifully in concert. But if you want to, you can listen. Listen, you can taste and smell and pick out and follow individual threads of flavor. And that's really beautiful. That's, that's really nice. There's a lot of skill expressed in this beer. And that skill is... is targeted to a very, or is, works together to produce this really, really delightful beer. Um, there's a reason Black Butte Porter is a standard on the West Coast. There's a reason that Deschutes Brewing is a, a quality and respected brewer. It's because they make good beer and Black Butte's one of them. <laughs> well, 
I have a few other things I have to get done today. Um, got some chores to do, and then uh, men's retreat is starting this afternoon, so I'll be off for most of the weekend, cavorting around with a bunch of dudes, um, you know, as we do. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I'm enjoying a wonderfully seasonally appropriate black beef porter, and I will catch y'all on the flip side.